Before you take your test, I wanted to go over factoring. I find most people find factoring pretty easy until we start mixing them all together. So, I've I made a chart to figure out which type of method you need to be using. Now, the first thing you always have to do when you're trying to factor any type of polynomial is check for a greatest common factor, no matter what. Now, after you check for a greatest common factor, you need to count the number of terms. If you have two terms, the only thing that you can do is use a difference of perfect squares. And this is where you have perfect squares in the first and the second part of your parenthesis. And so you ultimately end up with factors of a plus and a minus version. Now, if this is not perfect terms, or if it's not a minus sign, you can't use it and you stop. It's prime. The next thing you can do, look for trinomials. This is where you have an a squared, b squared, and c squared. You need to multiply the a times c and find factors of a times c that add to b. This is what you put into your parentheses and then put an a underneath it so that you can just see if you need to do bottoms up. Now there are some things that I've showed you that have four terms. Now after you've taken out the GCF the only thing you could do with a four term expression is to group and that has been done on a different video. Let's go ahead and take a look at this first example. Now the first thing you always need to do is check for a GCF. In this case a 1, a 2, and a 35 don't have anything in common. So we're looking at just a regular old trinomial. Now if we take a trinomial we need to multiply a times c so we get 1 times a negative 35 which gives me negative 35. So I need factors of negative 35 that are going to add to this b term which is going to be a 2. So factors of negative 35 all we have are 1 and 35 and 2 and 7. Now in order to get a 2 and a 7 to, or I'm sorry, we have a 5 and a 7. In order to make a 5 and a 7 a 2, one of them is going to have to be negative. Which is good, because this negative 35 means that they have to have different signs anyway. So to get a positive 2, I'm going to have a positive 7 and a negative 5. And when I put these in my parentheses, I look at my, my letters. Now in my letters, I end up having a, just an A squared. So you're going to need to have an A and an A in the back front. In the back, we have a B squared. So you're going to need a B and a B in the back of your parentheses. And then inside, you're going to put that positive 7 and the negative 5. The last thing you need to do is you need to check for your greatest common factors. I'm sorry, you check for an A. All we have is the invisible 1, which means we're done. On example number 2, first thing we need to do is check for a GCF. 6, 33, and a 15 can be factored by the number 3. So once we take out a 3, I'm looking at the trinomial of 2c squared minus 11c plus 5. Now that that's taken care of, we still have 3 terms. So we're going to multiply 2 times 5. And that's going to give us a positive 10. And factors of positive 10 then are going to add to a negative 11. Factors of 10 are going to be 1 and 10 and 2 and 5. Now 1 and 10 can be turned into 11 just fine. We have a 1 and we have a 10. The problem is, is they need to be negative in order to add to the negative 11. They'll still multiply to a positive so this will work just fine. So we now have the parentheses. We need a c minus 10 and a c minus 1. And don't forget the 3 that you already factored. We need to check for an a. This one has an a. So I'm going to put a 2 underneath both of my terms. When I reduce, 10 plus 2 is, over 2 is going to be a 5. 
and then this one half can't reduce. So the two is going to make the bottom go up. My final answer is going to be three times c minus five times the quantity of 2c minus 1. Next one, we have a 5x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now there is no GCF. So we're on to the next one. This is still a trinomial, so we're going to go 5 times 4 equals 20. And we want factors of 20 that add to a 2. Now factors of 20 are going to be 1 and 20, 2 and 10, and 4 and 5. And the factors that I can turn into a 20 don't exist. So if you have a trinomial that you have not checked, not been able to factor this way, you have no GCF, the final answer is prime. Now when you're doing your test, there are going to be some prime numbers. If you get every problem being a prime number, you probably need to go back and check your work. On this last example, we have only two terms. So the only thing you can do for two terms is you need to check if it's a difference of perfect squares. Now, x to the fourth is a perfect square. If you divide the 4 by 2, you get its perfect square. So x to the fourth, I'm going to get an x squared plus 1 and an x squared minus 1. Now, a lot of you are going to want to stop here because you factored out a difference of squares. The problem is that this is another difference of squares. So that means if I stop here, it'd be like um, simplifying an 8 over 16 and taking a 4 out and getting a 2 over 4. You factored it, but you stopped too soon. So in order to finish this one, we have to look at just this difference of square. Now the square root of x squared is going to be an x plus 1 and then I'm going to have an x minus 1 and then my original parenthesis is still there. So my ultimate answer in factored form would be x squared plus 1 times the quantity of x squared plus 1 and x squared minus 1. And that's it for factoring overview.